start the session, sir. Yeah, um, Melo is speaking. Say so your voice is breaking, sir. Yeah, now you can hear me clearly. Yes, and now it's clear, sir. Shall we start the session, sir? Oh, one second. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We can start, not a problem. <clears throat> Good afternoon, to, good afternoon to everyone. I welcome you all the participants for the Atel sponsored FDP on Internet of Things in Smart Cities for day one, session two. Welcome you all. It's a pleasure to welcome our resource person, Dr. Noor Muhammad SK, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Indian Institute of Information Technology, Design and Manufacturing, Kanjipuram, Chennai. Welcome you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I request Rakesh to give a short intro about the today's resource person. When life puts you in tough situations, don't think by me. Think try me. The most suitable person for the above quotes is our today's resource person, Dr. Noor Mohammed, Assistant Professor, Department of CSE, IIT DM, Kanchipuram, Chennai. He completed his BTEC in Electronics and Communication Engineering from NBKR Institute of Science and Technology, Tirupati in 2001. He completed his MTEC in Electronics Design Technology in National Institute of Electronics and Information Technology, Aurangabad in 2000. The Indian Institute of Tech. Reversible circuit design. He has more than 14 plus years of experience in teaching at various institutions. He has published more than 10 plus journals in various publications. He has, attend, he has presented more than 20 plus papers in various conferences. And now I'd like to call the Dr. Noor Muhammad sir for giving Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Are you able to hear me clearly? Yeah, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir, it's audible, sir. Okay. Yeah, your voice is breaking, actually. That's a problem. Okay, that's the reason. I... Fine. Uh, I hope... Uh, what is the target group, actually? Hello? Yes, sir. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay. Uh, fine. Uh, so, the target group is all of faculty?
。OK。Yeah, I didn't get any response. Okay. Am I audible to clearly everyone? Sir? Yes, yes. Tell me. Yeah, uh, so fine. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope you can able to hear me very clearly. Okay. Uh, let me continue with my discussion, what I'm planning today. Uh, so what I will do is uh, today I'll give a brief overview about uh, this uh, system that we typically use and how we can build this uh, uh, smart systems, okay, uh, that is uh, used in the smart uh, cities, okay, uh, that I, I will present now, okay, and uh, yeah. So typically, when you talk about uh, uh, any system, okay, uh, it may be built uh, by either by using a computer system of uh, computer system approach, or it can be built by using an embedded system uh, based up, uh, application. Okay, so these are two way uh, we'll do that. Okay, and uh, typically you can uh, see that uh, the core part of the any system uh, any application, if you look at uh, the way you see here. Uh, so your uh, embedded system or computing system is going to be placed in uh, is the core part here, okay? And uh, so based on the application, you are going to uh, use uh, respect to sensors, okay? Uh, there is going to be sensors and it passes the, uh, it collects the information and uh, it gives the uh, system, okay? Uh, it means uh, I will have a, something as a central uh, processing engine, so where uh, all my uh, sensed information from the each sensor, I'm going to collect it, and uh, then I'm going to uh, pass it to that. Okay, so once I pass that one, uh, then I'm going to uh, process in the central engine. Okay, and then based on that, uh, I'm going to uh, make a decision. Okay. So again, the decisions can be done, uh, a few things can be done in a locally approach, locally in the system itself. A uh, few things can be done uh, even in uh, uh, centralized because the coordinate, uh, coordinated related uh, uh, decisions are central, uh, central of the applications. Okay. Yeah, uh, so if you look at uh, the applications, uh, for this one is uh, you can see here a medical uh, domain is one thing the consumer electronics is another one and uh, uh, you can uh, see above one more uh, application is uh, uh, your uh, transportation so transportation system is also one of the application here so, when, uh, about the building point of view. Uh, typically, when you talk about system, what are the things will be there and uh, how we can use that one? What are the ways we can build this uh, system? Those uh, those point of view, those aspects only will be covered. Uh, in case any questions you have, uh, you can also type in the chat box uh, such that uh, uh, I can clarify to you. Uh, I hope uh, you can able to hear me clearly. Yes, sir. Sometimes breaking the device. Yeah, I, I have uh, some unstable. Um, yeah, this on an enter. Uh, but anyhow, I'll continue. Uh, I'll try to. Okay, okay sir. Thank you. So, 
so now uh, if you look at uh, uh, majorly uh, as you know that today's uh, discussion is uh, uh, transportation uh, system okay so we use this uh, system uh, uh, our uh, smart uh, sen uh, <coughs> system building by, by using an anti lock uh, braking system or uh, airbag deployment or uh, even on board entertainment point of view uh, Uh, navigation point of view and uh, even uh, uh, way this uh, approach okay. so there are enormous applications that, uh, that can be built uh, uh, with respect to the transportation uh, system and uh, where your embedded system is going to play a, a major role okay so now based on the Um, okay uh, so you have to think about uh, what kind of uh, support to uh, for the specific application that you have to have okay so now uh, application point of view so there are uh, different ways uh, we uh, uh, any kind of uh, system building any kind of uh, application so it is going to have uh, it is going to look like this where you have a processor you have a memory uh, a system bus which is going to be connected together okay and uh, in uh, memory is going to be connected to this uh, system bus here okay uh, typically connected here and then uh, you can also see that uh, there is a something called peripheral bus is peripheral uh, bus is connected to the Uh, my input and output devices okay yeah, essentially peripheral device means output devices that are connecting to this bus okay so your input devices uh, uh, can be uh, something uh, which is uh, your sensors okay uh, what you are connecting uh, that is uh, your sensors is a input devices which will uh, sense the uh, my um, uh, my parameters in the uh, environment and it feeds the digital data directly to the uh, my uh, the my main memory and then it sits into the main memory from there uh, with, uh, uh, whatever the sensed information so on the same information uh, which i am getting so in the processor i am going to program it such a way that uh, suppose uh, there is something uh, there is a x value i supposed to get and uh, if the value is greater than x so then i have to take some actions where uh, like something like uh, i have to turn on my actuators okay so actuator i have to turn on uh, in that case uh, uh, i'm going to send my a uh, signal from the uh, my io i'm going to send a signal from the io such a way that my actuators like motors or something uh, some other uh, thing uh, some other uh, uh, <coughs> electrical appliance or something which i'm going to turn on it so actuators will be used so typically uh, like you can see that even it may turn on the your uh, anti braking system where it can apply a brake or even it can turn on the uh your uh, air bags okay such kind of things uh, which it can do this so based on this okay so this is one approach uh, which we can uh, uh, follow this approach is was we call it as a uh, generic purpose uh, uh, processor based uh, computing system building okay so which typically we can use and uh, we can build the entire uh, system okay and uh, all the intelligence what we trying to put here into the system uh, we can uh, program here in the, uh, com in the in this computer okay where uh, it will be connected to the all the uh, uh, sensing informations from the sensors and uh, based on the sensing information it is going to take actions okay uh, by with the help of actuators or uh, some other uh, components Uh, so if you look 
uh, if you look at uh, so mostly uh, if you are somebody is trying to build the entire system um, by using a, a microprocessor okay uh, again when you talk about automobile vehicles okay so either you can use a, a microprocessor uh, like a single chip integrated circuit uh, which will contain a complete uh, uh, central processing unit um, beyond that nothing will be there uh, typically uh, whatever we use is uh, atom process uh, from the intel uh, or any other uh, make related uh, centralized microprocessor also you can use and uh, so, so since it is only going to have a processor it does not going to have any kind of memories okay uh, so like uh, ram and rom uh, these things will not be there, even uh, peripherals will not be there. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to externally uh, uh, connect this one. Uh, we have to use external inter uh, to this chip uh, to uh, interface uh, uh, RAM uh, memory, uh, RAM module as well as a RVM module. Okay. So and uh, even uh, whatever the IO peripheral modules are there, all these things uh, which we have to connect it. Typically, what we'll do is we'll have a small kind of chipset which we will wear on top, on top of our chipset uh, where I will have a ROM and we'll have a ROM. So essentially why we need ROM is uh, where we need to store the all the boot routines, all the uh, other uh, program routines will be stored here, okay, initially. And uh, then even you can, uh, and, uh, and each routine, uh, whenever you say go for execution, that routine will be taken to that and it is going to be executed in the RAM, okay? So this is how typically it is going to happen, okay? And uh, yeah, good, uh, when you talk about microprocessor-based computing system implementation, uh, so in that case, uh, your uh, typical computer, uh, whatever you use at homes or uh, in the offices, okay? That's uh, one of the best example for that. So the other approach uh, which we can also use uh, to build this uh, computing system is uh, um, by using a microcontrollers, okay? So again, when you talk about microcontroller, it contains that uh, uh, entire computing system on a single chip. Uh, what it means is the entire computing system means on a single chip, okay? Uh, if you look at the processor, processor does not have a ROM and ROM on a peripheral this microcontroller, uh, it is going to have a, uh, apart from the processing unit, that is central processing unit, uh, it is going to have a, a fixed amount of uh, uh, present inside, okay. Suppose the size of the uh, ROM and RAM that is present inside is not sufficient for your uh, uh, programming. Uh, in that case, uh, you can, uh, uh, additionally, uh, built uh, 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 external. Uh, you can add. You can append the external memories. Okay, and uh, and you can also extend this memory space. Okay, and apart from that, also it is going to have a peripherals, uh, all within a single chip. Okay, in a single chip, you will get uh, all these things uh, where uh, I have a uh, memory, I/O, and everything. So, and uh, since uh, many things are available here. Uh, and I don't need to build additional uh, uh, interfaces here. Uh, so that's the reason why this we call it as a control microcontroller. Uh, uh, yes. So this is uh, this is a one way. Uh, this is another way of implementation. So either you can use microprocessor or you can use microcontroller, or you can also think. Of uh, your design uh, by using uh, uh, this uh, okay so digital single processor is a specialized processor uh, which is a uh, 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 signal processing uh, purpose okay and uh, such a uh, uh, the sequence of samples, okay, or uh, typically we will also uh, we will also use one of the softness that is going to depict the uh, signal. So when you talk about a specific operation, this uh, 
uh, one signal onto the another signal. Okay, so typically, options are supposed. Okay, uh, in this case, uh, in such uh, my uh, best process is going to compute very costly uh, compared to uh, generic. Uh, general purpose computers are microcontroller, microcontrollers, okay? And as you know that uh, DSP processor will have a, its own kind of instructions and uh, it will also have a hardware structure such a way that uh, uh, so majorly a multi-precision uh, uh, um, operations of what it meant by operations, especially multiplication, uh, multiplications. Okay, uh, this, uh, like, uh, I can do a bit multiplication, or I can do uh, six bit multiplication, or I can do 30 bit multiplication. So I have a structure internally such a way that uh, a It is going to have a, a various uh, uh, supports, DSP process support, uh, multi-precision uh, uh, operations. Uh, when you talk about multiplayer, uh, it will have a 8-bit uh, multiplication, 16-bit multiplication, 32-bit uh, multiplication, such kind of support will be there. Okay. And another thing is also, uh, whatever the arithmetic operations that we are performing, uh, we can perform here very fastly. Uh, uh, in this uh, hardware because it is deeply pipelined uh, a kind of structures will be there and even it can be capable of performing a, uh, a mac operation that is uh, typically very standard basic uh, uh, operation that we do when it come to the uh, digital signal processing so that can be easily performed uh, in this uh, because we have a structure for the mac so though we have, when you talk about general purpose or microcontroller based process system, processing systems, uh, it does not have a Mac, it will have an adder and multiplier. Uh, and uh, if you want to do multi uh, Mac operation, so we have to do uh, repeated multiplications and uh, addition. That's how uh, typically we supposed to perform there. But when it come to here, uh, we have a hardware structure itself uh, uh, present here. Uh, the hardware structure itself is present here, such a way that we can uh, perform this uh, multiplication and accumulation of our operation in a single uh, clock cycle. And uh, as you can see that uh, the hardware uh, chip is available, uh, which is specifically meant for the DSP. Uh, and uh, that's the reason why uh, any DSP operations we can efficiently perform here. And uh, even uh, it is going to be more efficient in terms of performance and power consumption. And uh, when you are going to implement uh, this DSP process for uh, your audio or video uh, implementation. Yes. Uh, yeah, here I would like to take uh, some couple of questions. I hope. Uh, uh, you can able to hear me. My audio is clear. Yes, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir, audible, sir. Okay. Any questions uh, you have till this point? Participants, if you have any questions up to this, you can put it in the chat box or raise your hand.
So seems to there is no query. Yeah. Now uh, we have seen about what is the processor, and uh, we have seen that is general purpose processor, and we also seen about microcontroller, and uh, we have seen the difference, and then we uh, also discuss about uh, DSP processor. Okay. So now uh, I will talk about the another one is going to be embedded processor. Okay. So, so embedded processor is uh, again a specialized uh, uh, kind of uh, again it's a kind of more generic uh, purpose computing application one point of view, but uh, 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 which will have a some kind of uh, 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 a special uh, kind of interfaces will be there uh, and uh, essentially if you look at uh, uh, this is something uh, which is going to be uh, more mix and matches of. Uh, my uh, microcontroller in my microcontroller whatever is there so all the things i can do but uh, apart from that i am going to have a additional extensions here uh, such a way that uh, a user can uh, uh, use it okay uh, again when it when it come to the uh, this embedded process okay uh, you may be having a, uh, you may be using a microcontroller definitely inside. Okay, apart from this microcontroller, uh, you may be using a additional uh, and additional uh, mechanisms, uh, such as uh, some of the resources uh, like uh, some of the peripheral resources. Like, for example, uh, I'm using uh, in a, my microcontroller. I'm using a one. So here I may be providing a some six six R. Uh, I can use. I can use more number of uh, seconds. So, uh, essentially, the way we do is here. Okay, uh, the, you have understand here. So I will Okay. And I will have a my, my embedded uh, that is microcontroller will be there, and uh, I will use the one URT and uh, I will have a uh, some say okay, and uh, similarly uh, even uh, like uh, ports you may be having a uh, typically on microcontroller. So I will have a more uh, pins to be available here. Okay, and in fact, I can have uh, other uh, interfaces like PW. More numbers I can have here, and it has the So, with, uh, what I'm trying to say here is uh, you are going to have more number of IOs uh, will be present here. Okay. So, that can be used here. Okay. You can, uh, as you see here, uh, having a uh, one parallel port, you can have more parallel port, PWM, SPI, those things will be available uh, on a single chip itself, okay, uh, which a user can also use it uh, very efficiently. And uh, another thing, uh, see, essentially, if you look at uh, today, uh, today's uh, market, the way we are building these uh, systems, okay, uh, again, embedded systems, uh, uh, some of the embedded systems will uh, come uh, with a programmable fabric uh, of an FPGA device within it. Okay. Uh, such uh, 
Sir, your PPT is not visible, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the, my net is not stable, I think. Okay, that's the reason why. Okay, I'm sharing again. Yeah, okay. yes. Sir. It started sharing, sir, but still it is a black color. Yeah, it's now visible, sir. So, uh, so again, uh, the requirement is uh, uh, at user end uh, is something where he need, uh, he need to meet uh, some kind of timing requirements, okay? Uh, but uh, he cannot uh, use some kind of discrete component outside the chip, and he cannot build the system. Maybe, uh, yeah, definitely build the system, but the point is that it will not. Uh, lead to the timing constraint what he's looking so in order to accommodate that one uh, today uh, if you look at um, some of the embedded process okay whatever we are getting so we'll have it on a single chip we'll have a embedded process okay uh, our processing systems along with we'll also have a, uh, a reconfigurable fabric will be there okay so what is this uh, reconfigurable fabric so it's, we typically we call it as a reconfigured fabric or uh, we also call it as a uh, programmable fabric okay so what do you mean by programmable fabric this is typically something like uh, and uh, our plane okay uh, will be available as you know that uh, any digital system i can implement by using a and and r plane okay so i can implement by just using an and and r plane okay uh, so uh, i i have a such kind of uh, uh, hardware here so such that the additional uh, hardware is supposed to build uh, to meet uh, the timing requirement i can build on this uh, uh, i can configure at the on the instant in the lab itself I can use it, or I can also use uh, my LUT lookup tables. Okay, uh, typically it is going to be a memory and multiplex, uh, which we typically uh, which will be used to build uh, uh, to construct these LUTs. Okay, so this kind of LUT structures will be available, and where I'm going to configure the function RSTs, uh, what I want to implement it. Uh, such that I can get that uh, logical behavior, logical circuit implemented on it. Again, uh, even I can also have a MUX. So multiplex, multiplex is also a universal programming element uh, where uh, uh, by using a multiplexer, you can build uh, any complex hardware here. Okay. And that, that kind of any, uh, your reconfigure fabric, either it can be made up of under and plane or it can be LUT based or it can be multiplexer base, uh, which will be available here, okay, in a single chip uh, available uh, like this, okay. So which uh, a user, uh, the end user who wants to build his system, uh, what are the additional functionality, which is very complex in nature, uh, which he wants to make it on this one, uh, where he can build it, okay. And uh, yeah, again, uh, there are, uh, so he can build it and uh, he can, uh, if you want to connect this one with the existing uh, uh, processor available on the chip, yes, I can, he can do it. Okay. Again, if you look at here, uh, the existing processor on the chip, whatever is there, so that we typically call as a hardcore processor. 
so we typically called hard core processor uh, the reason is uh, the processor available here is a embedded block so any process available as a embedded block which uh, he can use it so again uh, so now uh, there is another concept is called a soft core processor so what is this uh, software processor means as you are aware that uh so essentially arm is the company which is uh, mostly works with the uh, uh software core software implementations they don't have any direct chip manufacturing uh, mostly what they do is uh, they write the uh, uh, hdls and uh, they build the hdl based uh, system implementations and which they will uh, sell as a ip course okay. so so like that uh, there is a software ip is also available uh as a hdl uh, modules okay again what you can do is uh, based on your requirement uh, you can uh, choose uh, uh, which are the modules are needed which are all not required and uh, you can combine it you can make a system Uh, so uh, so when it come to the software uh, so uh, what are the component you need it other uh, uh, in at the level itself you can uh, think and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, make means you can choose what are the things and how you want to connect it how want, how you want to make that system so those are all you can uh, um, work out at hdl and uh, that is what we call it as a software Uh, and that one we can uh, program it into the my reconfigurable fabric such a way that i can build the system and i can only use this reconfigurable fabric and i can connect to the my peripherals that is available here and uh, that is the one way of uh, implementation and other way is uh, uh, i can also connect this uh, both the things together and uh, means my processing system uh that is the embedded uh, processor whatever is available here along with this whatever the um, implemented software both things we can also interface together and uh, connect to the my io peripherals i can also use it okay so this the uh, these are two basic uh, approaches uh, which we typically follow in implementing the any computing systems okay uh, see again uh, this model of implementation will go uh when uh, we have a uh, there is a complex functionality and uh, where i have to uh, meet the timing constraints okay uh so in such cases uh, i uh, i have to think about uh, this kind of implementation and when it come to the hard process uh, our hard core process uh, typically it is uh, uh, built from the dedicated silicon uh again it can be a general uh, build based on the general purpose logic uh, on the uh, chip itself okay where the soft core processor is uh, uh, built by using a general purpose logic of the apg uh, that is apg means typically this uh, whatever reconfigurable fabric we typically call it as a uh, apg based fabrics and uh, since i am implementing this one uh, a soft processor uh, must be synthesized such a way that uh, we can fit this one into the my fpga fabric and uh, if you talk about uh, this embedded process so where we can build that uh, hard hard core based embedded process system or soft core or combination of both the things you can also use uh, along with that the local memory and bus interconnectors and uh, my memory controllers even uh, some of the internal uh, uh, peripherals i can use it and uh, i can uh, realize the uh, system on this uh, single chip so this is uh, another uh, experiment so typically if you look at uh, till now uh, whatever we have seen is uh, there are uh, four ways we can build the systems one is uh, either you can use microprocessor Uh, but it's only a processing element will be there in a single chip and all additional uh, uh, whatever the required peripherals are there for your building system so you have to build on a single uh, pcb and you connect to this processor 
second one is microcontroller microcontroller is going to have a processing along with the memory and peripherals will be there and uh, that you can make use it and uh, you can build the uh, suitable controllers by using that the third approach is uh, uh, dsv some of the operations uh, video processing uh, where dsp processors are going to be a more efficient uh, which you can implement it by using a dsp processor and the fourth approach is going to be an embedded processor uh, where uh, i may be having a processing system on a single chip along with i will also have a reconfigurable fabric so here we'll have a concept called two uh, two types of processing elements. One is going to be a, a, a hardcore processing element, another is going to be a soft. So it will be a software processing element or hardcore processing element, okay? So which uh, I can, uh, uh, in, in like now. Sir, your screen is uh, not required visible, system. Check now. Yes, I know it's visible, sir. Okay. Yeah, uh, these are four versions uh, which I have covered now. Uh, any questions here till this point? Uh, you can also type in the chat box. Yes, any questions uh, you have related to discussion till now, whatever we have? Okay, fine. So now let's uh, move on to the next uh, uh, thing. Okay, so we have seen that uh, four ways we can uh, build the system. Now we'll talk about uh, co-process. Okay, uh, this co-processor is also a processing uh, code. Okay, uh, typically that is supplement the functionality of the primary processor, and uh, uh, and it is highly optimized for a single or a specific task purpose. Okay. Uh, essentially, if you look at uh, when we think about a co-processing is assume that uh, whenever there is a computation task that I'm, whatever that computation task that I'm having, uh, it is computationally intensive and uh, I cannot accommodate that kind of computation task uh, uh, in my uh, uh, core processor. The point is if I implement that one in a main processor, uh, it may impact on my clock, but uh, I want to maintain the clock also. Uh, at the same time, I want to also have a implementation of uh, uh, such implementation. Okay. Uh, so in such situations, uh, uh, whichever the complex implementation task is there, uh, which will uh, uh, degrade the clock. So those things I'm pushing into the uh, my additional processor. Okay. Uh, means additional processing element, we also call it as a co-processing element, okay? So it's a call, we also call it a co-processing chip, okay? So where we will make it. So here, what we are doing, we typically offloading the computations from the main processor uh, to uh, uh, one or more uh, uh, co-processing unit such that uh, I can uh, improve the overall performance and I can, uh, I can accelerate the overall performance without degrading the main processor related clock, okay? So uh, what are the types of uh, tasks typically I will think about uh, implementing in the uh, my co-processing element? If you look at one is uh, high speed arithmetic uh, circuit implementations, okay? And uh, even uh, image and video processing applications uh, uh, which I may be having and uh, which I will uh, take it as uh, to the my co-processor or uh, even any digital signal processing uh, applications. Okay, uh, suppose if you are using a main processor as a, a CPU base, or, uh, uh, and then uh, we have a, a something uh, where signal processing the complex tasks are there. In such cases, we can uh, offload that uh, 
all the DSP operations to this uh, DSP uh, uh, this uh, uh, DSP processor that is uh, kind of acting as a co-processor to the main processor. Uh, even uh, even when it comes to the uh, my security point of view, data encryption. Okay, uh, where uh, one may be oh, where uh, we want to convert that uh, a, a message into a cipher text, uh, or similarly cipher text into a messages. Okay. Uh, these are all uh, which are all uh, these are all the some of the tasks where I can build a dedicated hardware and uh, all these hardware I can connect to the uh, as an additional chip to the my co main main processor uh, such that I can uh, compute it. Yeah. Uh, so essentially, you have to understand uh, why we think about co processor is. Uh, we want to offload the some of the intensive tasks uh, into the uh, additional chip, okay, uh, such that uh, it will not degrade the my clock performance. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Any questions uh, you have uh, till this point? Uh, uh, you can also ask me. Okay. So now uh, let's talk about uh, a few more things about uh, uh, the system, okay? Uh, computing systems that we typically use for this uh, implementations, okay? Uh, if you can see that the way it is going to look, uh, we'll have a processor core, okay? And uh, each core will have a, its own uh, uh, local uh, cache, okay? And uh, it will also have a, a set of registers, okay? and uh, arithmetic operations okay so that's the thing oh, here i just indicated that the way uh, the way it is going to be uh, programming model looks here okay uh, i'm not showing here uh, as a arithmetic operation I mean, uh, uh, arithmetic logic and shift operations where i'm performing uh, see all your uh, all your uh, program code So, and uh, data is going to reside in this uh, main memory. Uh, essentially, this will be connected to the, my hard disk. Okay, uh, from hard disk, I'm going to bring this one and I'm going to place it here. Uh, how I'm going to do this one from hard disk to my main memory, I will typically use OS concept, operating system concept, uh, such that uh, my a block of data or uh, which is there in the hard disk, which I'm bringing and I'm going to place in the my memory, okay, uh, my main memory, okay. So it may be a, whatever the data you are bringing, it may be a, a, a maybe a code or it may be a data, okay. So once I place here, uh, so whatever the program uh, is uh, based on the, my processor request, uh, whatever the address that is specified. So now uh, my processor gives a request, and uh, if that is available in the L1 cache, so we call it as a cache hit. Okay, then I, it will be supplied the value. If it is not available in the L1 cache, then I'm going to go to the next level cache. It means from there, I'm coming to the next level cache. I will check here, uh, is there uh, uh, the address, whatever processor is given is available here. So then uh, uh, if it is a hit, okay, then I'm going to supply from directly to the processor. Or uh, if it is not available, then I'm going to go to the next lower level. So typically, if you look at most of the computing systems, whatever we use, uh, we'll have a L1 and the L2 on a single chip. Okay, so this is will be there in a single chip. L1 and L2 will be available in a single chip, and uh, some uh, and uh, we'll also have a, a, a additional. Uh, um, miss, we'll also have one more uh, scalable cache, which is going to be, we call it as L3 cache. Uh, majority of the time, it is going to be an off chip. Why we call it off chip means it is not on the processor chip. It is going to be a, uh, outside the processor and close to the processor it is connected. The Whatever the address that is looking by the my processor is not available, it comes to the my L3. And if it is available, it is a hit, we call it. And from there, I'm going to supply. If it's not available, then I go to the main memory. And uh, from main memory, I'm going to bring the blo uh, a block of that one and placing here. From there, I'm going to send it to here. And finally, I'm going to give it to the processor. 
Okay, so this is the how uh, your program code. Okay, so typically we call it as a program code and uh, data. So both is going to be supplied. Okay, uh, as uh, again, since uh, uh, this my program or data, whatever we are accessing, uh, it it follows the principle of locality. Okay. Typically, it follows the principle of locality. Uh, it means uh, either uh, uh, spatial locality or it can be uh, either it can be spatial locality or it can be temporal locality. Both uh, any one of the thing it is follows. So where it can uh, uh, supply the instructions as well as data to the main processor. Yes. Uh, yeah. This is how uh, my uh, instructions will be supplied. Even uh, in case of uh, any of the processing element used, either microcontroller or microprocessor, or DSP uh, or even uh, your embedded process, the uh, this programming model uh, will be uh, followed. <laughs> And uh, so once we bring the instructions, typically uh, how we are going to execute is uh, my processor fetches the instructions. Uh, again, what is meant by fetching the instruction is uh, it gives the uh, address and uh, so where uh, yeah, whatever the that address it is my processor is providing. So in that address location, there will be a instruction will be there. So that is required for the execution that I'm going to bring it and I'm going to place it into a my instruction register of the process. I'll place it in the instruction register in the process. Once I place in that, uh, so if I'm following a hardware-based control logic, so it is going to generate automatically control signals, or if I'm following a micro-program-based, uh, uh, micro-program-based control logic, so in that case, uh, I will uh, run some uh, subroutine programs here, such a way that I can generate the control signals. So now based on the generated control signals, either use a hardware based or use a micro program based. So I'm going to uh, execute the, uh, means I'm going to enable the my execution unit. It means typically if uh, um, I'm going to give the add control signals and I'm going to supply the add up brands and uh, this whatever the operand that I supposed to uh, add, add it like R1 and R2. So those kind of things, uh, which I'm going to give it, essentially if you look at, uh, uh, it goes like this, add R3. So if I'm having like this and where this is the source one, source two, and this is a destination. So uh, after decoding, I will get a add uh, uh, enable signal, uh, means which enable the addition hardware and uh, r1 out and uh, r2 out okay this these are the some of the signals will be out uh, will be given one and uh, in the first uh, controls uh, first clock cycle and now it will uh, give the uh, uh, this signals means you start uh, executing by getting the values from r1 and r2 and start executing so once it uh, executes so whatever the result is there that is going to be placed into the r3 that is not shown here okay and uh, once it completes uh, finally again it goes for the next instruction so the, typically this is how uh, my instruction is executes this is called instruction cycle Okay, uh, this is how uh, my instruction uh, is going to execute uh, in any uh, any of the four scenarios, whatever we have seen here. Okay, like uh, a microprocessor, microcontroller, embedded processor, and uh, DSP processor context. Okay, uh, yes, uh, any questions here? Uh, do you have any questions? how you can type in the chat box okay uh, i can also answer that uh, so typically uh, see uh, whatever the course we write uh, that will be uh, higher level languages will point off you will write uh, today you can see that uh, when it comes to the embedded systems or uh, when it uh, when it comes to the 
uh, programming point of view. Uh, we got a very good uh, uh, compilers, okay, such that it can support easy way of programming. User can understand and uh, where he can program it at a higher level. And finally, whatever we programmed it, okay, uh, at higher level languages, okay, like C or C++ or embed C or uh, uh, any other uh, embedded programming uh, languages, okay. So those, the, whatever we have coded, that will be converted finally into the uh, machine code, uh, which is uh, uh, in terms of binary format, which will be accepted by the, which will be accepted and understood by the uh, my process. Okay, so this machine codes only, which will typically stored in the my hard disk, and uh, 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 sorry, uh, this machine code which uh, we are feeding to the process, so where my process is going to be uh, executed. This way. And uh, yes, uh, when you talk about machine codes, uh, so it, uh, this machine codes will have a, 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 a defined structure uh, which will be followed. Uh, again, we'll have a machine code implement, uh, will be uh, with the instruction formatting. Uh, what we follow is going to be having a, something called op codes, uh, which will be uniquely defines what is the, what is the operation I supposed to perform. Uh, in the machine that will be defined by using a op code followed by the types of registers which uh, which type uh, which register i supposed to use uh, and that register code will be there in the instruction okay uh, essentially if you look at uh, if i am following a 31 uh, uh, 32 registers in my system so since i have a 32 registers so how many bit code I needed 32 base two. Uh, so that is five bit, uh, uh, five bits I need to represent the registers uh, ranging from R naught. So R naught is going to be four, five zeros. R one, it is going to be uh, zero, 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 one. R two is going to be zero, 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 one, zero. So like that's R 31, which is going to be one, 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 one. One, okay. So like this, it will be there, and uh, this is how we encode the register. And uh, at the same time, uh, whatever the operation is there, let's say uh, I call add operation. So let's take uh, add is going to be represented with a six-digit operation code. Let's say this is a six-digit operation code add, and uh, I have a multiplication which is going to be again it's a six-digit operation code. It is going to be and if i'm having a and again it is a six digit operation code so let's take uh, like this okay so like this uh, i can encode totally how many operations i can encode is uh, so totally six binaries are there to power six uh, uh, operations i can encode by using this approach <laughs> yes so, so this is how uh, we will have a op uh, operation code. Now, what we, what I'm trying to convey here is, I will have a instruction, uh, instruction format, so where I will have a op code, and uh, so now let's say I, my instruction is following a op code. Okay, uh, let's take a. Uh, is is a format of add r1 comma r2 comma r3 so then now uh, what i'm going to have okay so let's take uh, i have a r1 i have a r2 i have a r3 okay so like this so now you know that this is a six digit this is a five digit five digit five digit so totally it is going to be a uh, five plus uh, uh, sorry uh, 15 21 digit okay so 21 digit and let's assume that my instruction total size is going to be a 32. Okay, so 32 minus 21. Okay, so you can see that uh, I have a, still again 11 bits are there. So let's assume that uh, all these 11 bits are going to be uh, are not, uh, it's going to be a don't care kind of things I will keep. Okay, so now how I can enforce this, uh, my add is, so you can also see here, so I can have, six zeros so that's the add operation r1 means zero 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 
zero one and R two is zero 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 one zero. R three is zero 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 one one. And uh, this is how typically in here. <laughs> This, uh, this is how uh, this uh, uh, instructions will be formed, okay? And uh, each processor will have its own set of instructions, okay? Uh, which is proprietary to the processor design. Uh, so once you understand the format, uh, the way we, uh, they have defined it once, uh, then uh, you can comfortably write the very good codes, okay? Anyhow, today we don't need to worry about writing at uh, machine level languages, uh, uh, very basic level uh, you can uh, start writing at the higher level uh, because uh, there are uh, very good compilers in, uh, available which will convert that higher level program style directly to the uh, my mission course And uh, yeah, this about the instruction uh, uh, formatting. Now I'll talk about uh, uh, fetching the instruction, uh, how it is going to happen, how it is going to be put. So you can see here, uh, I will have typically my processor will have a register called program counter. So where I will place the my address of the my program which I supposed to execute. Let's say I stored my entire program in a memory. Uh, Let's take I stored in the my entire program in a memory. Let's say 2000H is the memory. Now uh, my program counter will have a 2000H will be stored here. When I say go for execution, so this address will be placed onto the address bus. Okay, so now 2000H will be sent on the address bus where it will point to that specific memory location in my main memory the main memory and uh, so now uh, it's sent here and now since i i gave the address i need to read the memory location i will also give the read control signal uh, where uh, 2000h memory location let's say that is going to have 56h so this memory location content is going to be loaded now okay now that is the thing which i'm bringing here uh, as an instruction okay because it's loading from the 2000 location and I'm sending that one uh, to the, my instruction register. Okay, uh, I'm placing this one into the instruction register and then uh, where I'm going to uh, decode these instructions. Okay, and I will generate the control signals what I have explained earlier. So now once I place here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to increment the my uh, program counter by plus one. Okay, that now it is going to become let's say each instruction is stored in a one one memory location uh, now in that case it is going to be incremented by one suppose if it is increment uh, it is stored in a four uh, four uh, and the instruction is stored such a way that uh, each location score uh, can store only one byte of instruction and uh, where it is going to be your instruction size is 32 bit uh, typically in that case uh, you have to do pc equal to pc plus four okay so that's the thing what uh, we'll do. Again, uh, we are going to send it to the program counter such that it can point in the next level to the next instruction such that it can keep continuing the execution. So this is how uh, my instruction uh, fetching and execution will continue. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, any questions uh, uh, here? Uh, you have any questions? So actually, I'm covering uh, uh, what are the mechanisms and how we are going to do this. Okay. Similarly, the way uh, once uh, uh, we get the instruction here, we are going to decode the control signals. So once I decode the control signals, my control unit is going to give the uh, uh, signals to the my. Uh, Processing elements. Essentially, the processing element is going to be a my with sitting within the ALU, like adder is a one processing element, uh, multiplier and uh, division hardware or uh, logical and logical R. So those kind of uh, hardwares will be available here. So when I whenever I give this control signals, whichever the relevant control signals. Uh, that functionality will be enabled and uh, input data will be fed to those things and uh, where uh, it will get executed and the final result will be placed okay 
So this is how uh, it is going to be happens. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> even uh, when it comes to the uh, I/O operations also. Uh, here, uh, there are typically we do two types of I/O operations uh, when it comes to the uh, any computing system uh, you 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 are following. So one is going to be we follow memory map I/O. Another one is going to be I/O map I/O. So when it when you talk about uh, your memory map I/O. So what you are doing is, uh, you, you when you are building the system, uh, you are going to view entire uh, uh, system memory map into a three categories. So the top one, whatever you are using, it is going to be a ROM, and bottom one, it is going to be a RAM, and uh, whatever intermediately we are is a that address space. Okay, whatever the address space, this is what we call it as a I/O address space. Okay. This is what we typically call as the I/O address space. Okay, and uh, this uh, uh, these three things uh, uh, will be there. But actually, uh, you can see here uh, my uh, here each location or uh, in the my I/O address space can be directly connected to the one one I/O device. Okay, and uh, here uh, the way I/Os are going to be accessed. Uh, it is. Uh, it means it can be directly accessed uh, from the memory to the uh, memory uh, as a memory address. Okay. Uh, let's take an example here. So let's take. Uh, I have a I/O device. Uh, so let's assume that uh, this is going to be a, a 16 bit address locations. This is going to be a 16 bit address. Okay. And uh, let's assume that I have a address is going to be something like. Uh, uh, Three two double zero. No, let's not. Let's not. Uh, let's take a larger number, okay? Because so let's assume that I have a address which is going to be a five five uh, double zero. So this is going to be. Uh, connect to the one of the uh, uh, light, okay. Uh, one of the light of the uh, my vehicle or something, okay. So in such case, what I'm going to do is, uh, so if I want to turn on, okay. Uh, if I want to turn on, uh, so what I have to do is, so I have to send the uh, uh, signal that is connected. To, means I have to. Let's assume that uh, each is uh, this location is going to store. Uh, so the address is 16 bit. So which I have shown here, and uh, each location stores only 8 bit information. So let's take uh, address is 16 bit means this is the thing. Okay. Now what I am going to have, I have to have a control logic. So, I means I have to. How address such a way that uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, and uh, 0, 1, 0, 1. And then I have here four zeros and I have here four zeros. Okay. So if you look at here, uh, so what we supposed to do is uh, I have to have a, whenever you, I have to build a hardware such a way that it can be uniquely selected by using this address. Okay. So what I'm doing, I'm going to take not get and then I will have. And I will also take not get, and else I have, and then and get. And uh, so let's take year 15, year 14, year 13, year 12. Okay. Similarly, I will also have, so this is a, what you say, year 15, year 14, and year 0. And uh, Year 11, year 10, year 9, year 8. Okay, so where again I will use wherever 0 is not get. And get. Okay, so there are four zeros are there. I'll just use uh, four not gets. So 
दिस इज ए जीरो ए वन ए टू ए थ्री ए फोर ए फाइव ए सिक्स ए सेवन So now I will take all these AND gates and I am ANDing with the, another AND gate. Okay, so this is the final AND. So now this is the thing what I will connect to the relay. Okay, yeah, this is uh, I will enable the relay. Okay, uh, or uh, enable logic, and then. Uh, Uh, I will also have eight bit information. Let's say the zero bit of the eight bit is the control signal which I am feeding here. Okay, or you can also have a mechanism like this. I can have a one more under under gate. So I can have a one more under gate. So my uh, let's say D not bit is G one. Uh, D not bit is one. Then I will get one here. Okay. Provided five five double zero, uh, H is given. It's uniquely in this address. So now this is connected to the uh, my relay uh, relay control signal. So light is going to be this is connected to the light. Okay. So in that case, this light is going to turn on. So whenever I give one here, it is going to be on. So whenever I have a D not bit is zero. Uh, though I have a five five double zero, so then it is going to be off. Okay. So this be uh, uh, my I O uh, is directly uh, accessed uh, with the help of the eight bit information that is stored in that uh, uh, memory location. So this kind of implementation we call it as a memory mapped I O. Okay. On the same lines, uh, uh, my processor can also access my I O devices. Uh, up, so this this is this kind of implementation we call it as a memory mapped I/O. Um, but when it comes to the I/O mapped I/O, uh, my processor is going to have a, a, a registers like uh, uh, in register, uh, which is meant for the input where all the any input that I want to get it, I can bring it into the inside this register, and I will also have a out register. Okay, so in and out registers will be available here. Okay, uh, and uh, So, uh, so where my input and output devices are directly connected to this register uh, with uh, some address. Okay, so this kind of uh, uh, enabling of the I/O device we call it as a I/O mapped I/O. Yes. So this way uh, you can uh, connect any any peripheral device, any component of the your vehicle or your home. Or any application uh, which you can build based on this uh, uh, exam. Yes. So, is it clear? Any question here? Yes. Any question? Yes. Uh, any questions you have, uh, you can ask right now. Okay, or you can even type in the chat box as that I can answer. Participants, if you have any queries, do put it in the chat box or raise your hand. Yeah. Uh. Yes. Uh. Okay, fine. <coughs> so now let's. Uh, uh, I hope you understood IOS how we can connect. So now we'll talk about interrupts. Okay. Mm, so it's essentially, interrupt is a signal uh, which we uh, generated by the peripheral devices. Okay, so where uh, it requires some kind of attention, uh, such that my process, uh, 
uh, means where I supposed to run some kind of interrupt service routine, okay, or some attention to be given to that IO devices, okay, okay. And uh, typically, uh, mostly these interrupts will come from that uh, uh, external uh, uh, means whatever the IO devices or even some kind of exceptions uh, what I'm having in my system, okay, uh, uh, which I supposed to handle. Uh, for example, uh, whenever somebody gives divided by zero, uh, so in such case, I will also generate an interrupt. Uh, so division by zero is uh, not possible. Such kind of error messages I supposed to print it, okay. Uh, these are all some kind of exceptions which I supposed to handle in the computer systems. So that can be done by with the help of uh, uh, this uh, interrupts. Okay, and uh, if you look at whatever the processor you are using, most of the process uh, uh, you call it any class. Okay, it is going to have only one interrupt signal. Okay, so that is a uh, int or uh, int interrupt and uh, int a. Uh, acknowledgement. These are two signals only will be there. So this is going to be in, uh, input to the chip on my processor chip or processor or microcontroller chip. This is output. So this is an interrupt acknowledge, uh, sorry, interrupt request and interrupt acknowledge. Okay. These are two pins uh, which will be available on the processor which we uh, use it. Got it? So now uh, what we are going to do is uh, suppose uh, uh, though you have a one in, uh, only one hardware interrupt is available in the processor, but uh, your system may have more number of uh, I/O devices where each I/O devices may need a special attention uh, in some cases uh, when you are handling the exceptions. Okay, so in such cases uh, uh, you need to have a uh, multiple interrupt lines. Okay. So, uh, so in such situations, uh, I, I had to physically make it available that uh, uh, multiple uh, interrupt signals uh, can be handed. So this is the thing what we are typically doing is we are multiplexing the multiple uh, interrupts into a uh, one interrupt and which we are going to give to the process. Again, the way we are going to select the uh, selection mechanism of this multiple uh, multi, uh, uh, um, multiple input interrupts that are coming to the my processor chip is so I will have a, some uh, selection logic where all the interrupts will come uh, from the different peripherals, but only one it will can go to the processor that is going to be as an INT. So I will have a selection logic that is there here. So uh, such a way that uh, so highest priority among this can be selected. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to assign a priority here. Okay. So I'm going to assign a priority. Let's say this is going to be having a highest priority. So uh, when this guy is uh, uh, use interrupt, so no other guy is going to be entertained. So this is the next highest priority. When both the things come, this is the only will be allowed. When all the interrupts are there, uh, our uh, uh, interrupts are uh, comes to the system, but only highest priority will be allowed, and then rest uh, once it is addressed, next one, next one, like that it can be. This is how uh, interrupts is going to be uh, handled here uh, in the uh, my uh, any of the uh, uh, smarter computing system that we are building. Okay, so where we with the help of priority we are handling this. One. Uh, again, uh, uh, based on the requirement, based on the type of the interrupts that we get, there are uh, three types of uh, uh, interrupts. Uh, uh, we can classify to the three classes of interrupts. One is a maskable interrupt. Okay, uh, again, uh, which can be uh, uh, whatever the triggering event, whatever you are getting as an interrupt. Uh, that is not uh, always important, okay? So that kind of things, what we call it as a maskable interrupts, okay? Uh, example for this one is uh, like timers or comparators or ADC related interrupts, okay? These are all is called maskable interrupts, okay? Which are all not that important, but anyhow, there's an interrupt which will come and uh, if you won't address also, it's not going to have any impact. Okay, so example is timers. Okay, you may be having some timer when uh, timer is going to be uh, exits. What do you mean by exit? Means your timer is ranges from four zeros to uh, uh, count is uh, miscounts from 
this is a maximum value once it exceeds a hydrogen radiant dot okay similarly some comparators where the uh, you set some values where it is uh, uh, that condition is uh, 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 based on that condition i'm going to generate the interrupt okay and uh, even uh, adcs okay in all these three cases uh, uh, is whatever is there is not that uh, important okay this is what this kind of interrupts are example for the maskable interrupt uh, and similarly, there is something called non-maskable interrupts. Okay, uh, these interrupts uh, uh, we should not be never ignored. Uh, there are something like uh, uh, which is very important. Okay, that's the reason why this is called non-maskable interrupts. Okay, uh, example is power on uh, when you turn on uh, power on resets. Okay, or external physical resets, and uh, even some kind of uh, serious device falls. These are all comes under. Uh, uh, non-maskable interrupts. <laughs> Apart from this, so when you are building the system, especially when you talk about a, a car vehicle kind of systems where we not have a single uh, uh, processing element for all the things, okay, or we may be having a multiple processing element. In that case, one processing element wants to communicate with another processing element, okay. Uh, in that case, I need to have a uh, some interprocessor interrupts, okay. So this is a uh, this is an interrupt which is we typically use in multi-processor uh, uh, approach. So in the case of multi-processor approach, uh, we follow this up uh, this inter-process uh, uh, interrupts. Okay. This is about uh, uh, three types of uh, interrupts that typically uh, we use in the uh, computing systems. Okay. And we'll also have a bus, okay. Uh, typically we'll have a main bus, which is going to be uh, consisting of three things. One is going to be a address bus, data bus, uh, and control signals will be there, okay. And uh, yeah, address bus is going to be unidirectional and data bus is going to be bidirectional. And uh, my control signals is also unidirectional. So few signals are going to be unidirectional. This control signals all are unidirectional only, that is from the processor it comes. And I will also have a status indicator signals, which is going to be a, a, a input to the my process. So this is how typically my uh, bus is going to be connected to the all the computing element, uh, all the components of the computers. Uh, you call it, it is going to be a embedded uh, based or you call it, it is going to be DSP based or you call it, it is going to be a, uh, any of the computing model you followed, okay? So typically we'll have a processing element is, uh, and uh, we'll, uh, this is a processing element where we'll have a local memory and uh, look, uh, whatever the IOs that are there. So all these things are connected via this bus. And uh, we'll also have a dedicated bus, which is going to be connected from the my CPU to the co-processor like this. And uh, based on the based on the operation, uh, the system bus is. Uh, uh, typically, we use for providing a communication between various peripherals and the processing cores. So that's the uh, that's the main role of this uh, system bus. And uh, yeah, and peripheral bus is going to be a IO bus, which we are connecting to the uh, 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 slow speed. Okay, slow speed devices. When compared to the process, the speed of these devices are going to be uh, very low. Okay. So that's the reason why you know that in the computer we'll have a fast uh, accessing uh, devices also there, slow accessing devices there. And uh, we are going to use a bridges between these two. And uh, again, a bridge is a concept uh, where all the address and data control lines which we are using, and uh, we are going to uh, give it to the, we are going to give it to the peripheral devices, which are all of slower in nature. Operationally, it is going to be slower when compared to the process. Yeah, and uh, essentially buses will uh, have operated in uh, two modes. One is going to be a bus master approach, bus slave approach. Uh, again, who holds the uh, control over the bus? That is why we call it as a bus master, and other things we call it as a bus uh, bus slaves. Okay, 
So again, uh, every bus transaction will be happening in one one clock cycle uh, from one one place to other place. And uh, who has to be a bus master? Who has to be a bus slave? Uh, for that also, we'll have a, some kind of control logic mechanism which we are using, so that what we call it as a bus arbitration logic, which will be implemented in the system such a way that uh, who has to be given higher priority such that uh, uh, they can attain the bus and uh, they can uh, involve in the tra uh, data transfers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this way, we will uh, typically build the system. Okay. And uh, yeah. Uh, in case uh, you, your system need uh, something like uh, uh, heavy data transfer to be done from the IO devices to the your main memory, uh, in such cases, uh, you can uh, think about using a DMA, direct memory access. Uh, so it means uh, your peripheral can directly place the data into the uh, your, uh, 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 your main memory, or similarly, it can access the data from the main memory. Example is uh, you can uh, talk about uh, your Ethernet. So your Ethernet adapter, if you are using your computer, so where uh, a block of data which you want to send it from uh, your Ethernet uh, buffer to the main memory, and similarly from main memory to the Ethernet buffer, you can do this. Okay. And uh, when it comes to the computing system, uh, you uh, see your bus bandwidth is also important. Again, typically how we uh, compute this bandwidth is uh, how many, what is the width of the data and what is a uh, uh, bus frequency. It means the speed at which bus is going to be operated. So these are two parameters which we'll take and uh, based on that, we can compute the bus bandwidth. So essentially the bus bandwidth is computed like this. Uh, uh, what is a bus width? So if it is a 32 bit, uh, that is going to be 32 bit uh, width into what is the frequency? Let's say it's going to be 10 megahertz. So when you multiply this one, so that gives the my bus bandwidth. So 32 into 10 megahertz, so 320 megabits per second. Uh, so divided by eight, if you do, that is going to be eight four. So that's I think 40 megabytes. You will get it. So this is how uh, typically we'll uh, estimate the bus bandwidth. So this these are the key uh, components uh, that we use in the uh, any system building. Uh, yeah, uh, I have. Uh, uh, yes, uh, any questions you have? So I have just uh, presented uh, different modes of uh, uh, approach, different approaches that typically we follow in building the computing systems okay uh, for uh, uh, any applications uh, you call it as a smart city or a smart home automation or uh, even uh, uh, smart vehicles okay so this point of view yeah if you have any questions you can ask yes any questions Participants, if you have any queries, put it in the chat box or just raise your hand so that we can unmute you. So no questions are being asked. Okay. Can we conclude the session, sir? Yeah. When educating the minds of our youth, we must not forget to educate their heart. In this way, I'd like to propose a thanks for our today's resource person, Dr. Noor Muhammad. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I also love to thank all the participants. The next session is exactly at 3 p.m. All of you should join.
the attendance come feedback link will be provided in the chat box do fill it out thank you all the participants are requested to fill the attendance from feedback form provided in the chat box and also the session timing for the third session is from 3 pm to 4:30 pm the third session timing is 3 pm to 4:30 pm all the participants are requested to fill the attendance from feedback form for session 2 and the third session for day 1 will be started exactly at 3 pm to 4:30 pm thank you all the participants are requested to fill the feedback come attendance link provided in the chat box within 30 minutes and the afternoon session will be exactly be started at 3 pm thank you <laughs> 